Before we get into how to evaluate logarithms, what we're going to do is we're going to basically review some some rules of exponents. So these rules apply basically if our base is greater than one. So anytime your base is greater than one, it can be anything. It could be two, it could be four, it could be whatever. As long as it's not a fraction, or uh, obviously you can't have negative bases. But uh, what we're going to look at is what happens when we have a certain exponent and then what that does to our answer. So first thing is if your base is greater than one and you have an exponent that's greater than one. Uh, for example, like we have, and a good example would be 4 squared. So our base is larger than 1, our exponent's larger than 1. Our answer is going to be larger than the base. We all know 4 squared is 16. So therefore, good habit to get into, just to see the relationship. Uh, if your base is greater than 1 and your exponent is in between 0 and 1. Basically what we're dealing with is we're looking at fractions. So for instance, if we have 4 to the 1 fourth power. Now, it's been a while since we talked about a rational exponent, but one thing you do need to remember is the top number is your exponent and the bottom number is your index. So when your, uh, when your exponent is in between zero and one, the denominator is larger than the numerator. So that usually means that you're taking some type of a root. So what this would mean is that uh, four to the one half power is the square root of four. So therefore our answer would be two. So our answer is gonna be smaller than our base. The last thing, if your base is uh, greater than 1 and your exponent is less than 0, which of course that's negative, then we're going to end up with a fractional exponent. So if I give you something like this, 4 to the negative 1 power, we could either take the reciprocal of the base to make the exponent change signs, or you could move the base down to the denominator, and it would be 1 over 4. So good things to remember as we start into simplifying logarithms. So we're going to look at a couple examples and see if we can't figure it out. Now there are a couple ways to do these problems. One thing you should do on these problems, and I'll try to repeat the same thing every time, is if you have log base 2 of 16, the question is, is 2 to what power is equal to 16? So you might be able to just think about it. 2 to the first is 2, 4, 8, 16. So our answer is going to be uh, that this is equivalent to 4. So it will simplify down to 4. Now notice we don't have an equation right now, but if we really needed to and we were trying to set this up, there's two ways to do this problem. You could go ahead and say this is log base 2, and then if we have the same base here as the base of our logarithm, then they'll cancel. So you could say, well, 16 is really 2 to the 4th, and then now those things will cancel and give you 4. And then the last way we could approach a problem like this is to go ahead and say, well, if I don't know what it's equal to, I can just set it equal to x. And then what I can do is go ahead and take the log base 2 of both sides. So as you can see, what we are thinking about when you look at a problem like this is 2 to what power will give us what we're taking the log of, which is the exact same example here. So sometimes it helps to rewrite it in an exponential function to be able to come up with the answer to that. So when we're looking at the next one, we we'll say log base 7 of 1 over 49. So it's 7 to what power will give us 49? 1 over 49. And what you should know is your base is 7, and right here you get an answer of uh, 1 over 49. So what that should tell you is you're going to have a negative uh, value. So this should be equal to a negative, because 7 to a negative will give us a fraction, and it's going to be 7 to the negative 2 power. So again, what we're really thinking about when we're looking at this is 7 to some power is equal to 1 over 49. And because we get a fractional answer, we know our exponent's negative. And then 7 to what power will give us 49? It's 2, so it's negative 2. Looking at the next one, this time, as you can see, uh, we would say 36 to what power would give us 6. So when we're doing logarithms, log base 36 of 6, would be 36 to what power will give us 6. So in our mind, what we should be thinking is this. And that's actually the exponential form for this logarithm. So if you don't know this, you can use this concept, set it equal to x and change the form. But hopefully through repetition, you'll see it's a little bit better, uh, see this easier and more often. Now if you notice, the base of our logarithm is larger than this. So what that would tell me is our, uh, when we simplify this, we'll get a fraction. So what root of 36 can we take to get 6? And that would be the square root. So we would basically say uh, that log base 36 of 6 is equal to 1 half because the square root of 36 is 6. 
And then our last one, basically what we can do is we can go ahead over here and say uh, log base three of the square of the seventh root of three. What we're trying to do is come up with that answer. Well, all we have to do is just go ahead and say this is really the log base three of three to the one seventh. And then now you have like bases, so it'll cancel. So we get one seventh. Just like when we're doing other inverse operations, you know, when you're actually trying to divide, you can actually use multiplication. So how many times will four go into 20? You would say, well, four times what will give me 20? So you're really using the inverse operation to help you out. We're doing the same thing when we deal with logarithms. So again, you would look log base two of 16. You would say two to what power will give me 16? And that will help us get our answer for these uh, expressions.